up, everybody? I'm Dory Renaud, your host of the Glory Podcast, and we're filming right here at Groundwork Studios. We got some lovely champions uh, sponsors. They sent us some lovely hoodies for all of our guests. Yeah. And um, make sure y'all go to champion.com and check out all the new releases. Uh, today, it's, it's, it's a good day, because I actually got three people in here that I actually really no, for real, you know? Sure. So we're going to talk a lot of music. We're going to talk a lot, of, a lot of everything. We have Ro James, Grammy-nominated artist. We oh. have Stacey Barth, Grammy-nominated songwriter. And then we have Andre Harris, he Grammy-winning he producer. I let him know. <laughs> <He laughs> Nigga won. <laughs> he won. He won. <laughs> he won. <laughs> you know, that's why he's last down there. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him win again. Look at him win again. <laughs> going to win right. again. Look at him win again. Yeah, you know, it's... It's it's crazy to be here with three people that you know that that are associated with the Grammys, and so usually we go with hot topics, as you know, Stacy. But I think I want to start off and ask y'all like, is that important? Like, how do you guys really feel about being nominated and being recognized? Because all of you have been recognized. He won, mm -hmm. but <laughs> but how do you how do you feel about it, Stacy? I would prefer to like win one. Yeah. I hate when people put it like in a flyer, like Grammy nominated, yeah. like almost doesn't count. That's like, still an just, honor, though. You know, it, it it is, but at the same time, it wasn't even for me. It was like, you know, for the Loud album, Rihanna, that I wrote on. Uh -huh. I'm just like, I would. I would one time just like to grace the Grammy stage, and I don't care if I ever do it again. I just when? need to do it one time. So it does matter to you? It Like a little, yeah. Of course. Little, what, what about you? I think it's, a, uh, it's one of the goals yeah. as an artist to obtain a Grammy uh -huh. yeah, for your work like, to be recognized by the association, and you right. know what I mean? That's a bigger your platform, your yeah. peers, your mom, mm -hmm. your grandmothers, right. they mm -hmm. pay attention to the mm -hmm. Grammys and they know right. what that means. So it's just like, even if I win just to give it to my mom. Mm -hmm. Right, I need you one, know what it's I mean? like a diploma. It's like, right. you know. You got it's like it. a diploma. You feel, you feel like it's necessary. Yeah. Dre, you, you won, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, place, though, too, yeah, 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 yeah. How, how did you, how did, how did, before you won a Grammy, how did you feel about it? And then after after you won, did, did it change your thoughts? And does it still feel like it felt prior? Well, I, I actually remember, like, going to the Grammys for the first time and just being in, in the arena like, man, I'm, I'm at the Grammys. Right. You know, and I, I think I got a certificate of participation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> over and over. <laughs> and this one and that one. Yeah. I'm just like, man, this shit ain't, this is right. not doing it for me, you know? And... You know, after you do receive Grammy and stuff like that, it's just like, okay, it's not all that it's cracked up to be because you start to understand the businesses and, like, you see projects and artists that definitely deserve a Grammy. And you're like, ah, this is a little bit deeper than the artists mm -hmm. and the music. So, Did it make a difference in your career, though, after you won a Grammy? Uh, I guess so. It's a... You know, right. Respect. So that's what you guys pretty much want. It's, it's the respect on your name and it, you know, you can do more more things with it, right? I think it's, for me, it's just a personal goal because I okay. know all of it doesn't mean shit at the end of the day. Wherever, whatever we attain, we're going to be trying to attain something else. Right. We get over shit quick. Yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? So once you get the Grammy, you're like, child, I want an Oscar, honey. Right, you know right, 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 right. Like, so... <laughs> Greedy artists. <laughs> nah, it's just living. They just want everything. Having bigger goals. <laughs> wanna, and, at least one. Right, wanna, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. More and more, that's life. You know, right. Like, whatever We're never peak you reach, you're trying to reach the next peak. Yeah, for sure. Right. So I know, Dre, you mentioned, like, the business. You say the business sometimes taints it, which was my next question. I mean... All, it, all of you guys have been in the, you've been in the business for a really long time, over 20 years, and, and you two over 10, of course. Um, I know when I first met you, you had like this spark in your eye for songwriting, and it was like, I really want to do this. And when I first met you, unsigned, you was just wanted to sing, and, and that's it. And I'm sure the same with you. Has the business changed the passion uh, uh, for the art, and has it made you sometimes... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, be disgusted with that inside of you that I have this art because I wish I could do something else, you know? Because if it's in you, it's in you. You can't do nothing else, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, the, the, I've been in the business for over 20-something years for sure. So right. I remember being, like, super passionate and wanting to work all day long. And, and then you get some success, and then you're like, okay, hold on, let me slow down. And, right. You know, then you understand the business, and you get, like, pissed off at certain things, and... Then you, you know, you like, man, I'm gonna I'm stop for a little bit or get, take a step back. And then you feel that passion. You're like, damn, I really love music though, so I can't right. stop. So you, you, you learn to get smarter and you evolve and learn the business. And you know, it's just like, 
you lose your passion, so you you like learn how to do things mm -hmm. like without being passionate about it. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Which is tough because you got to like survive off of right. your craft. Right. You know what I mean? But it's a difference between being like passionate and wanting to do some shit and do it because that's inside of you and just like, man, I got to do this to make some money. You right. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Stacy, I know you mentioned to me you lost your passion for a minute for songwriting. Oh yeah, I did. Um, I know right now you're getting back into it. Well, like, how do you? How did you find your passion back for it? And was it a time you were like, I'm just not doing it anymore? I mean, I just, I was always unrecouped in my publishing deal. Mm -hmm. And so all the sessions that I was doing, I was like, okay, but I still can't pay rent. You know, right. huh? Like, I'm on a loud album. That's not her problem, but, yeah. you know, I ran mm -hmm. out of money. And I'm just waiting for things to come out, like working on albums that, you know, I were, wrote a song for Akon back in 2013. He's still working on the album. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do it for free, I'm going to do it for me. And at the time, I was 360 pounds. Like, I was like, I'm not going to let nobody see what I look like. I'm just going to put these rejected songs out as a mixtape. Mm -hmm. And people did. And shortly after that, I got a deal. But songwriting, you know, when, when you are doing it to make money, it becomes like, you're like, why am I putting all this into these other people? Right. Especially when you... Can sing and you, right. you know, you might not be the. I'm not like the standardly beautiful, typical, you know, thing, whatever. But you just start to doubt yourself and be like, man. Nah. Mm -hmm. But um, to answer your question, I'm I'm always gonna songwrite. I'm just not trying to like whore myself out like I did in the beginning of my career and like, ooh, where the session at? Like mm -hmm. I'm pulling up. Can't you gotta conserve your energy. Right. And Ronnie, I know I like people consider you one of the new crooners, the new guys of R and B. And I know you study old school music like all of us. You know, you know your real shit. My name is Ro James for the record. Ro James, sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Ro James, and you know, I know I know these people personally. But you 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 study old school music. You know, all right, we get it. Ro James, all right. You just keep asking um, questions. You study you study new you, old music, and you know you kind of like a new guy in the music. How do you feel competing against, you know, the Bryson Tillers and all of these other guys? Do you feel like it's competition or do you feel you have your own lane? I don't. Yeah. I don't compete. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Bryson is Bryson. Right. He brings his perspective. I feel like Miguel is his artist. Right. Luke, BJ. Right. Any male artists out here, I feel like they're in their own lane and I'm a, on a whole different planet. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I feel I feel like our experiences are the thing that separates us. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up everywhere, man. I was born in Germany. My family's Panamanian. My mom from New York. My dad's from Indiana. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've been everywhere in the world, so there's no way that any one of those artists that we name could be like me because they haven't been where I've been or experienced or loved or been hurt or, right. you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't compete. I tell my story. My story is based off of my experiences mm -hmm. with love, life, relationships, being a man, trying to be a better man, trying right. to be a good father, trying to balance girls and women and, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just, that's my story, you yeah. know what I mean? So I don't compete with them. I feel like they're dope, but I'm me. So, Dre, uh, speaking to that, you were at a time doing that music at that time, and then now you're doing it at this time, right? How do you see, wh wh where do you see the state of R&B music when it comes down to, like, how you were creating back then to, like, now? Because it is only a few people that they only even recognize, and you're one of them, you know, but it's, it, it, back then it was, like, a ton of them, you know, that you could work with, and now it's, it's kind of, like, slim to none. Well, I mean, it's it's good to see like the music me cycle back around, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely some new cats that are like super dope. You got Ro, BJ, um, Gail, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm happy to see. You know what I'm saying? It's refreshing to hear some real music and some cats that can like keep the integrity mm -hmm. but still give a new vibe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, so it's it's, it's fun for me because it's, it's old stuff that I do, but gives me a chance to like switch the drums up and right. you know what I'm saying, mesh different things. So, you know, I'm I'm ecstatic about the R and B coming back around and yeah. the, the, the newer generations and the millennials like really getting into like, oh man, you uh -huh. know, this is what's up. Doing the research and be like, you know, oh, they catching a vibe from some things that happened yeah. 10, 15 years ago, you know, so it's, it's good it's good money. Stacy, do you feel like you've had to change your writing style throughout the throughout the years? 
I mean, a little bit, but I've always like had a like a worldlier thing. Like I think it's different for me writing urban music versus writing for Miley and Katie and Rihanna. Like it's you know, I could tap into whatever. Uh-huh. But because of my musical palette and because I'm in the country and hip hop and R and B and Afrobeats and all that. It just makes for whatever I feel at the time. But I don't feel like I've had to switch it up. I mean, I get the, you know, the millennial. I'm like the bridge between the gap. We are. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We say it all the time. We're like between the people Mm -hmm. that we honored, like Puffy and you and, you know, and then, but but in between uh, Lil, what's his name? Um, Lil. 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 <laughs> and, <laughs> Lil and M. So we between Lil and M. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> the icons that we respected. Right. And it's all cyclical because it's, it's just all, like the 90s yeah. is coming back. We did the 80s. Puff mm-hmm. was doing the 70s. Like, it's just all, it's whatever, whoever is ruling the time is going to do what they grew up on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I have a question for, for all of y'all because everybody in the music industry, you kind of get to mingle with other people in the music business. Uh, and I know you shared this with me. We talked about this recently, how you meet people and you like so disappointed, like Ooh, and, and how they treat you because even as a songwriter or even as a producer, they can come in with a certain aura like you work for me or whatever, even as an artist, fellow artist. Has it been disappointing? Uh, more disappointing or more rewarding to meet people over the years that you might have like looked up to? I'll start uh, with you, Dre. Well, I, I, I could say I'm fortunate to have a really small percentage of disappointments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I actually had the uh, opportunity to work with Michael Jackson on a record called Butterflies. Yep. And, like, Stop. working with Michael Jackson, he was just the most Stop. humblest, mm-hmm. like, spirit and willing mm-hmm. and actually telling me, like, man, please tell me how you want me to sing it. Yeah. I'm like, man, this this Michael Jackson. He, right. I, yeah. I'm a nobody. <laughs> right. Yeah, right now. You know what I'm saying? And he still was, like, just very respectful and opening and make me feel, no, I was super comfortable working with him. I was yeah. just like, dang. Uh, nervous at the same time. Right, right, for sure. You know, I'm like, man, get it done. But, like, That's then you got enough. these lower level artists with it's the, it's less the niggas that success. shouldn't be acting and like that, right? They come in, I'm like, damn, what have you done to act like that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I don't get it. What about you, Stace? I mean, I've had some pretty, like, Disappointing experiences. <laughs> I won't say who, but I was just like, damn, I really who? thought you were lit. Tell us, tell us about one particular experience that you really, you looked up to this particular person and that Well, they it was a singer you. I was working with, and I grew up, and <laughs> damn, if she sees it, she gonna know. Anyway, <laughs> and I was like, I was so excited to meet her, and mama was a snooze. Like, I literally fell asleep, <laughs> and I was like, I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But... I've also had experiences like with Pharrell, Mm -hmm. who was superseded everything I thought he would be. Like he's still a he, you know, we met in 2006 and we were still cool. And he just over superseded everything I thought he was gonna be. So I've had like some bad ones, but like you, more good ones than bad ones. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? Um, and especially with other artists, because I know mm -hmm. the older artists that see younger artists coming and you can really perform. So the, the, the cast ahead of you that can perform, if they see you at the Soul Train Awards, like, is it that type of, uh, you know, or, nah, or has it been all love? Okay. It's been 100% love from every single That's one good. of the old school. Even ones that I looked and thought about and, like, right. I'll meet them one day. Yeah, They'll yeah. come up to me like, yo, man, yeah. don't stop doing what you're doing. I actually listen to you. One yeah. of Stevie Wonder telling me, mm-hmm. don't take the love out of my music. Yeah. and. You know, he listens to me and he pl- makes sure they play me on his station. That's you know dope. what I mean? That's that's Stevie. You yeah. feel me? Right. Like, he can't even my, see. He, he feel that shit. He feel it. And for <laughs> me, listen, my dad, my dad was, my dad's a pastor, right? Okay. But my dad was also very strict. So it's like, he wouldn't let us listen to anything other than like Stevie Wonder, Donnie Hathaway, Otis Redding. You feel me? Uh, so Stevie Wonder, I had to learn like all his songs, everything. You know what I mean? So for him to be dope. like, Yo, I like you. I like what you're doing. It's like, yo, that's what's up. Honestly, I feel well, like that's you know what I mean? Like when I, I done met some yeah. rude ass Andy, cool. people. I haven't, been, I haven't met the rude. <laughs> I ain't met yet. some rude ass people, you know. And it's it's, it's, it's unfortunate rude. when you Maybe do because you be looking up to them, uh, you're like, damn. It's, it's yeah. encouraging. And then it's like yeah. how you meet them too. Yo, yeah, yeah. Keisha it's Cole was mean to me for the record. Oh, <laughs> when I first met her, I was a nobody. And then when I was a somebody at 106 and Park, she tried to talk to me. Uh, <laughs> she was mean, but I, I, I asked you guys like that. that. Qu- I only asked you guys that question. Look, we all have bad days. We all have good yeah, days. No, sure, no offense to her, but I only asked you guys that question because 
you know, with the world of social media, people feel like they know you and That's shit. Crazy, How though. do you maintain? Because I, I said that to say, look, Keisha Cole was having a fucked up day in Lennox Mall when I was bothering her at 19. Okay, we all have that. People come up to me, I'm sure, all three of y'all, and you didn't feel it. Love. She didn't want to be bothered, right? Yeah, but, but, but my question is, how do you balance the, the social media image of yourself, right? And then the mainstream image of yourself, and then when people meet you and people have to interact with you, like, how... Because people lie on Instagram. People lie in video, right? Yeah. I mean, that's actually... I, I think that's one of my problems is because I can't separate being something fake for social media for right. the sake of likes and follows and for you to feel like you like my music. I right. feel like, I think that that's this, that, I mean, for some people, mm. you have to overexert yourself and yeah. be this extra character for you to have like an M for right. a million followers. You know what I mean? For, and it's just like, I decided that I want to be authentic 100%. Do you get, do you get pressure from your team and every, everybody to amp it up yeah, more? Of course, yeah. of course. Oh, you need to do a collage. And it's yeah. like, I'm not about to maintain no collage. Yeah. Right, straight up. I'm not doing it. Straight up. Straight up. I'm the same way. Straight up. This is a picture of what I look like. This is a picture of what I wore. Straight up. Have a good day. Yeah, I feel you. I don't understand. Do you feel that same way, Stacey? Because I know you deleted your Instagram. I did a delete. You know what I mean? I'm weirded out by the whole experience. I honestly never... I thought I'd be asking to be given autograph, like. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, as a kid. Yeah. But it's like, ooh, you're at replying me in person. Oh my god, are you at St. Bart's? Straight up. Are you at replying me in person? Yeah. <laughs> it is scary. It's, it's also it's, very yeah. scary it's too. Yeah. For the artist. Yeah. People yeah, yeah, pull yeah, up yeah. on you. You know. What I'm right. Pull up. They people. Right. Die. They pull up on you. Right. 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 What's up? That's okay. just too personal. Like, you, God, yeah, you to, to what Dre's saying, it's no mystique. And it's like, I feel like back in when we grew up watching the artists, we didn't know where the hell they was at. Nah. We just had to look at a poster on the wall. And that's why we were kind of like obsessed with them and held them up to these high standards. Yeah. Now, niggas can say what they want to the oh, artists they, directly. They got you know, they baby being born on Yeah, like yeah, you like see that. it all. I mean, even to the pregnancies, I remember like my mama was like, yo, when Diana Ross is pregnant, we didn't even know. You know, she had like six kids. So in, in this form, in this age that we in, it's like, because I feel like you do a good job of, uh, you know, your image. Is, it's kind of like people don't know what to think, which is a great thing. And I, and I, I love that, too, because <laughs> they used to do what we're doing now was when you sit in the interview, you get an opportunity to talk and then you'll that's see another interview raised. six that's how, right. months that's later. That's what I appreciate. You know what I'm saying? Prince. And it, yeah. And it makes like, you want to watch. Like, yeah, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know you, but I want to know you. Yeah. Right. You feel me? But it's like now you have to give so much. You yeah. have to give so much. It's and if like, you don't give enough, they not interested. Or they fall they fall out of interest I mean, with you the because they is, can't keep up with your personal they, life. If, if you want that much access, then you need to subscribe to me. Right. True. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Get on, my, get, get on my app. Anybody <laughs> That's true. The only people people selling themselves out on for Instagram nothing. Is is yeah, low key. Time, <laughs> right, right? Yeah, activity. Because back in the day, you would have crazy. to subscribe to a fan club sure. and shit to be able to like yeah. to email them or whatever. Uh, and I really, we get a response back to Right. Right, right, right. I feel like the, the inst Instagram has taken away the revenue of that side of thing, the fan revenue of, of things. Yeah. The I mean, the women selling protein powder and waist trainers. Yeah. Those are the girls getting paid on Instagram. Yeah. And also the girls that have uh, for booking. Yeah, for booking. Uh, but even 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 with yeah. even as a live performer, because you on tour right now with BJ the Chicago Kid, yeah, I you can't even. Like, I, I can't even, like, go to a show now live. Like, the whole On The Run tour I'm looking at yesterday, I'm like, well, ain't no point in me going because the whole it. fucking concert is on Instagram. How do you feel Sorry. about live performances, you guys? Because eventually everybody's already seen it. So how do you as an artist stay fresh and, and keep it fresh as a live performer when everybody's, you know, filming your shit? The subscribe thing. The subscribe, but idea. at the same time, make your show an experience. When yeah. people come to it, you don't... It's You can't get that feeling off the phone, and that's what we missing. Everybody chasing to see some shit. Mm -hmm. But oh, it's like, you are you Jamie trying to... Did. And what? And not... People weren't allowed to have phones. Yeah, I think they like, should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a, it's a I think they should do it because well, you have no desire to go see them because your phone feels so personal. You feel like you've seen the shit. Right. So when you go see it, I know what the intro looked like. I know what the show going to close, what song they're going to close out to. And I was I was looking and I brought the on the run thing up because Jay-Z and Beyonce, they get together. 
And I went to her Coachella performance, and I was I was watching it as a, a critiqued ass nigga and a fan. And I was like, oh, this is the same shit from Coachella. She did this, this, that, and the third. But if her Coachella performance had not been so grammed, right, Broadcasting. or everything like yeah. that, we would be more excited to go see what the show sure. looks like, what everything is going to be. I feel like even with them, they're the two biggest artists in the world, and people are not that excited. They're going to go. But they're not she excited. Had access. That's why in concerts, just what Janet did. She yeah. she was like, no, no phones in here. She comes from that age. Yeah. It's like you're not about to have my thing all over the ground, baby. Yeah. You gonna catch it and catch it when you catch it. Yeah. Right. You weren't there to catch yeah. it. Yeah. You need to come to the show. It, it, her, it, it hurts the artist. It hurts the artist. Um. So you know what social media also does. Hmm. Before we get off that subject. Mm -hmm. It allows artists to be inauthentic in who they are because mm -hmm. they can look at another artist and copy exactly yeah. what All it book. is. Yeah. One time I was, uh, I went pulled up at the studio and I was kind of like sitting back because I always just kicked it low, right? Uh -huh. And I was listening. I was in this room smoking and I was listening to a manager tell his artist, "Yo, he's showing her references of other artists." what to look like. And she was like, he wants me to get all these cartoon tattoos on my arm. Wow. And I'm like, for what? She was like, because it has a look. Mm. So it don't mean nothing to you. Yeah. So you just gonna copy something that you saw online because you think that that's what makes you cool. And yeah. then now that makes you an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now Insta every, every, everybody on Instagram is the cool police. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you got a name on Instagram, you got the right to tell niggas if they shit is cool or not because no. you have an opinion when you well, couldn't even get to artists back then. You know what I think artists do? <laughs> Look at a person who has less followers but got all the swag, got all the sauce. Yep. And be like, oh, I'm gonna jack that. Because yep. it's like, I'm it's me. I got 13 right million followers, and you got a thousand. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I, I'm I jack. Screenshot, send I, I, it to my stylist. Stacey, you said that several times. I know I know. I heard you say that too. You feel like people have taken a bit of, a bit of your style. Y'all both have two very distinctive styles. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of your stuff, and I heard a lot of the way you sing in that arena as well as you I too, right? Sons and daughters. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> sons and daughters. So yeah, 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 y'all got sons and daughters. All right, so um let's get let's get to you, man, first. Yeah, man. What's up? So you got a new EP out, Smoke. Yeah. And uh you on tour with BJ the Chicago Kid. We off you, tour now. You're off tour now. Yeah. You have Essence coming up though, right? Essence, yeah. So you excited about that? Are you changing up the show a little bit? And tell us a little bit about yeah. uh your EP. Uh the start about the EP, first of all. Okay. Smoke is um the first part of a two-part EP. The okay. other part is called Mirrors. I had the chance to collaborate with my brother over here, Jay. Yes, sir. And uh, so, this was our first chance to get to work, and we created joints. We got nice. joints, you know what I mean? Nice. And, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the whole premise behind Smoke and Mirrors, for me, Smoke came in a place where two years, I took two years, my album came out two years ago, uh -huh. was on tour, went through a lot of different things, breakup, you uh -huh. know, and new management, no management, figuring out this whole process. And you know, that whole process of trying to find someone you could trust right. in general right. is uh, is hazy, especially in this industry when mm -hmm. you don't know if you could trust anybody at mm -hmm. all. You feel me? So you, it, you're creating music, but you're just creating from the love of music in no particular direction. You feel what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. So I got in with him, with him and a couple other people, and uh, I felt like... We were creating fire. Dope. Mm -hmm. Feel me? And where there's fire, there's smoke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I took my situation and where I was and just being frustrated and created some great music. You feel what I mean? Yeah. So um, I forgot what the other part was your question was. Uh, <laughs> no, we, <laughs> it's all good. I'm here to keep you on track, That's brother. That's what it is. No, nah, I mean, well, with, with that EP, you're out. You was out on the road and yeah. doing it. So outside of Essence, are you yeah. going to do some independent shows coming up as well? I am. I know I, people want to see you. Yeah, I mean... Like I said, it's been two years. Uh -huh. It's a whole new album I'm about to put out in the fall here. And okay. uh, I'm changing the whole thing up the set. Uh, the sound is a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? More funky. Uh, it's, you know what I mean? You'll hear it when you hear it. But, no. uh, but I'm growing the show, you know what I mean? I feel like, as we've been talking about it, it's about the experience when mm -hmm. you come to the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to give people. And that's what I feel like is going to separate me from everyone else. So Dope. Yeah. Uh, Dre. Yes, Man, I, mean, I was I was over here looking at the at your Wikipedia, bro, and it's like he got a list. I mean, Michael Jackson, uh, Jennifer Hudson, Music Soul Child, Jill Scott. I mean, the list goes to Justin Bieber, Usher, Destiny's Child. Keep it going. The list goes on and on. Ring. Where 
I'm still working. You still working. And you still working. Ro James. Um, Ro James. Dorian. Dorian you know Renai. Yeah, you know, we're gonna we plug that soon. Too now, you, you know, know yeah, yeah. We we working. But you know, you keep clearly if if you're rolling, if if your uh if your resume is growing, you keep reinventing yourself. You've been through a lot of transitions as a producer uh, throughout the years. You were with, at a du with a duo at one point in time, and now you with yourself. Right. Um, how do you keep reinventing your sound, and where do you see music going, like, in the near future? Oh, man, that's a... Near future is a hard one to answer. But, yeah. But, because due to business, you uh -huh. know what I mean, the technology and the way things are evolving, you know, a lot of music is free at this point. So, yeah. you know, a lot of things... Way I come from and the way of business that I used, uh, I'm used to, uh -huh. has changed for sure. So you know what I mean. It took me time to catch up to speed and stay fresh. And you gotta, you know, get with the younger cats and uh -huh. not only figure out what's going on business wise, but listen to younger producers, younger music. You know what I mean. You keep, keep younger cats around, and that keeps you fresh too. Uh, but I also like, you know, keep the integrity of who I am, so I can uh -huh. like, you know kind of bend a little bit, but still keep my vibe on it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it allows me to, you know, do some new shit, but still remain solid on what I believe in, you know, my sound is uh -huh. and, you know, my integrity as far as music-wise. But, you know, it's 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 fun right now because, you know, um, you know, I, I used to deal with, like, having to go through the record labels as far as dealing with artists and, you know, getting paid this way. Uh -huh. So, you know, now the way business is set up and it's going, you know, it's allowed me to be able to put my own stuff out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And collect all the royalties the way right. I want to collect, make more money and control by income more. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I can actually collab with the artists I want right. to and actually, you know, not have to go through all these loops mm -hmm. and right. all this bullshit everybody have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So uh, being that I have a name, I can actually, you know, yeah. Get a, I can actually use it right. to get a, a Road James and a Stacey right. Bar for the door right. and put a, my album out myself, you know what I'm saying, with the right marketing and, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying, campaign, you know, so like, which I'm preparing to do right now, you know uh -huh. what I mean? So, you know, look out for my collabs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. my meshes with mm -hmm. different people and DJs and uh -huh. all that kind of stuff is coming for sure. For, for all like the future producers or people that are trying to get in your position right now, did you have any struggles when you were trying to uh, adapt to the new wave of how we doing Spotify and everything? Or did you oh, see a? Sure. Did you have issues with how you got paid? Was it a point where you were like, what the a fuck is going on? Absolutely, because I come from the whole wave of uh, it was no Spotify, it wasn't even a, a YouTube right. when I started. Here's the you know what I'm saying? Why the business thing got let, money let, no more. And I made real money. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember making ninety. Thousand for one song, you know what I'm saying? That didn't yeah. even come out, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And today, that's somebody's, that's a solid budget for somebody, you right. know what right. I mean? Right. So it's like, you know, making the transition from, you know, the music business being so like tightly niched and you couldn't get in or you couldn't just put out music so easily as you can now to, you know, seeing music up for free and the value of music tremendously go down. And, right. You know, you, you go from being like these exclusive production teams to like, people selling beats for 500 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if the beat is half good, yeah, somebody's going to buy that beat and not pay you your price for what you can offer. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah, so it, it was like the Wild Wild West for a while. You mm. know what I mean? Making that transition from just like the technology changing, the, uh, all these social media platforms coming up, like Instagram, Facebook, right. uh, all, you know, this is still fairly new. You know yeah. what I mean? And just monetizing these your, your music is, is still fairly new. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you, you got, like, Spotify and Pandora, all these different places who are, like, playing all your music and you're not collecting the proper royalty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, all these different things are still being worked out because they pay a royalty, a huge royalty all the time every month, Pandora, Spotify, uh, to these record labels. But the record labels don't allocate the money properly to the to the writers, to the producers of, of this music. So it's... it's fucked up right uh -huh. now, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of things that need to catch up and, you know, need more structure, of course, but, you know, it's a lot of pros to it, of course, too, you know what I mean? But It's, it's a lot of adjustments mm -hmm. working out. Stacy, do you have any uh, questions for these two fellas? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> um, I'm a Scorpio. 
<laughs> I know too. all that. <laughs> the both of you. Are. So, um, you are too, man. That's all right. So you produced like some of the records that raised me. You know, I mean, not to, but but really, um, who out of the artists that you've worked with in that neo soul movement was your most difficult to work with and your easiest to work with, and also who do you wish would have listened to you? Mm. And what do you think about that movement uh, having such a quick dissolve? <laughs> had a quick give me that, dissolve. Like, okay. Listen, I, I, okay. Sections. I, you know like, I've been you know, wanting to ask this for a minute. You gotta give me that in sections because I do a little okay. smoking head and that for my, so my cataracts and my TH movement. levels, TAC levels a little low. You a big <laughs> part of that. Okay. Which artist did you work with that was the easiest and most fluid to work with that you had just vibes with and who was the least, you know, Man, that's that's a tough question because, like, as I think back, like, each artist had a a, a, a good thing about them. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, like Jill and Music Soul Child and Floor Tree and Glenn Lewis. They all had cool things about them, but they all are artists at the end of the day. So they all had something about them that absolutely got on my nerves. <laughs> you know, what I'm <laughs> you know? And that's just that I can change. And I love all of them to death. You know what I'm saying? But like. You know how it is being a but writer, what do you think working with an artist. the death of that yeah, music? You know? Like, because it, it it had such a powerful movement. Well, like it. like everything, it gets oversaturated. It loses its authenticity of what's going on. Everybody starts to do it. It's too much. It gets soft and it turns into something else. Mm. You know what I mean? So, you know, everything has its its time. You know what I mean? Who do you think was the pioneer of that neo soul movement? Like, uh, what, before it was like neo soul. Like, who do you think led well, it? Well, I, you, you know, we. Think back to I guess like uh, D'Angelo putting that first album out that like really opened it up for like the cool beats and soul music and organs and all real instrumental kind of vibes over that you know laid back singing uh -huh. and stuff that you know it introduced a whole new vibe all over again and people were like you know what's that then you had Eric Badu kind of like follow up and it was a whole new movement right before the Philly neo soul movement but uh -huh. that like opened it up but then you had like Jill Scott you know which she just came out of the blue, really, because, you know, we didn't even expect her to do what she was going to do. She just, like, showed up at the studio one day. <laughs> uh, I knew her as a poet. And I didn't even know her as a singer. And she showed up. I was like, what are you doing here? She's Crazy. like, I'm here to sing. <laughs> I was like, well... All right, I'll catch up with you. <laughs> right here. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so I'll you know catch I mean? up with you. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, she Word. came down to the studio every day. Nobody took her serious. She stained the walls of the studio lounge, being Dope. busy. And this is facts. Wow. Until, That's like, crazy. like she, I remember she had <laughs> a meeting right? with us one day and said, That's like, listen, crazy. man, if y'all don't want to fuck with me, I'll go to the cats down the street, James you. Poison, and I'll work with them. Right you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I was like, all right, all right, all right we didn't do something. And I remember I, I had like a little skeleton of uh, let's take a long walk. Yeah. And I was like, I gave her the track. And I was like, well, you know, write something to it. And she came back. I was like, oh, I got something. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, that's that's cool. We're going to cut that. You know what I mean? Let's cut yeah. that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was like real rappy. And I didn't know her to be a singer. And she like evolved so fast. You know what I mean? And got good fast because when she got in there she didn't even know structures of songs or what? background she's like one of the greatest anything. singers yeah. ever that's crazy you know, to even like know she went fast <laughs> like that album that we got it together and it, it wasn't like we were trying to do a neo soul vibe it was just she was well, an artist that we ended natural. up giving this yeah. different crazy. stuff to you know what i mean and she was a fresh and a poet and combining these different things so it was like oh it's kind of cool shit and when she put that album about uh, I was like mainly a drummer at the time. Like that was my part gig. Like, I made my money off of playing uh -huh. drums, but I was a producer too. So I would go out with her on, on tour for a little bit, got the band together. And once she went out on tour, man, she like took off. Like she came wow. home, and I remember going to her, like a show at uh, in New York. Uh, one of the places, uh, I can't think uh, what what place it was, but uh, everybody was singing a song, and she was singing. And I was just like, man, she really could sing now. That's crazy. I was blown away. That's you know crazy. what I mean? So, like, Music Soul Child, he, That's tough. you know, meeting him, he was uh, Carvin Hagens, who wrote all his hit songs. Uh, he brought him to the studio one day. He was homeless. He came in. Uh, he had a badly chipped, missing front tooth. Crazy. He was like, my man's homeless. So, like, he's going to probably take a nap before we work. And I remember him coming to the studio. He would sleep. Oh, man. Three or four hours. When you wake up, you had to buy his dinner. He wow. ordered 20 chicken fingers, and then we worked. This wow. happened every, all, every session. 
Wow. And he was like a very pitchy singer, but when he sang, it was just like, man, it's, I, I feel something. Right, right. Guy. You know what I mean? And I remember we we, we did a, uh, he was, um, uh, did a song for some kind of soundtrack and uh, I remember <laughs> the Lord, <laughs> uh, he, he was about to sign the Def Jam and they had this song or something and uh, they wanted to take him off. And he was like, you know what? Nah, we go make, keep him on the song and make him an artist. And I remember he had signed with uh, Dior and uh, Tina Davis. Def Jam, uh-huh. whatever the case is. Yeah, I, like, yeah. Song. It's almost like you didn't it's expect. Cool. It's, it's some of the people that we might thought were like great from the jump. You, as a producer, didn't quite know what to think about them when they walked in your studio. Yeah, I remember Chris Brown walking in, like man. But did you feel? And, but did you did you see? Because you got to know something. Yeah, did I you did it, you yeah, when Chris yeah. Brown walked in and Jill walked like, in? Did you see something not in them? See, see it. Well, it, it it happens for sure at some yeah, point. Yeah. It, sometimes it's immediately and sometimes it's songs after. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes he's like, man, I'm working. I don't get it. And then yeah. sometimes you're like, ooh, I, I see something. But I, yeah, you know, yeah. you see, I remember like seeing a little young Chris Brown walk in the studio. He had all this energy. He would play ball and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, <laughs> man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I knew when he walked in, I was like, man, he a star. Yeah. You know? He had that. He had yeah. that personality about him, and you know, me and Stacy, we co-hosted a couple. You know, she been a, she's been a really good talker, and I like to have her involved because I like your perspective. Oh, yeah. um, so we got to give her a shout out again as my co-host. But we like to wrap the the show up, and because the show is called a glory, and I like to ask everybody their glory moment. And so to me, it sounds like you had a few, but what was like that moment where you said, like, you could breathe a little bit and say. All right, I'm here. I made it. Even if some shit get fucked up tomorrow, I'm here and I'm proud of this moment. Was it the moment with Jill, or what was that moment for you? Honestly, man, I had been through so much. Like, I was pretty much numb to yeah. feeling excited or angry at the uh-huh. point of Jill's music coming out. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I didn't actually start to get excited till I had multiple records on the radio, and uh-huh. I had looked up. I was working so hard, and not caring, because I was like, you know, I had been like through so many like whack situations and people fuck with your emotions and how you thinking you about to get kicked out of studios and this and that so I was mm-hmm. like man let me just be quiet and I'm gonna work and shut cats up with my work and I remember like being so dumb I couldn't even get excited and mm-hmm. I remember my brother was like yo bro you got five songs on the radio right. and I was like oh I kind of do you mm-hmm. know what I mean and I guess like when I did my my first publishing deal I had I, you know I had worked with Michael Jackson and stuff mm-hmm. but when I did that First publishing deal and caught that first million dollar check. I yeah. was like, okay, you know what I mean. It was a moment for you. Moment you, for you felt you like you I mean? had like, your, your hard work paid yeah, off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Stacy, what about you? What was your glory moment? I think my one of my glory moments um, was after getting my publishing deal. When you said that, because I, I, mean, I, I need to get a publishing deal. That sounds like a nice thing was, to get. <laughs> I was a pre law major in St. John. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Smart. And. I dropped out, mm-hmm. and I met Hit Boy on MySpace in 2005. I was in in my thing. I was interning at Jive Records, so he saw that he got. He thought I was an A and R, so he sent me a gang of beats, <laughs> and I'm like, "You swindled him!" Yeah, he did. <laughs> wow. He's lit. So, month after that, he met Polo to Don on MySpace too, and he flew him to Atlanta. I must not have been. Connecting on MySpace the right way. <laughs> for two weeks to work on Tiana Taylor, who I'd already known. Right. Since That's how like we met. 14. Yeah. Yeah, we met through Tiana. Funny. And then and then I was like, damn, I can't go back home. Like, I'm about to just it was spring break. My mom's calling me, like, where are you? Okay. School started. I was like, babe, right. I dropped out. <laughs> and I moved out. Same and here. I need help getting an apartment. Yep, same here. Yeah. So <laughs> when I finally, after that three month sabbatical, of going broke and not knowing where I was gonna like be mm-hmm. and dropping out of school and I got my publishing deal, I was like, oh God, okay. Yeah. Now the real journey begins. Yeah. So I was able to take care of myself and just not worry. And you were able to, and, and, and the glory moments are moments where you can just take them in. Mm-hmm. You know, when you sit at the house, even if you get a check or some shit happen at the house, something happen, you be like, thank you, God, thank you, universe. Thank you know, like even if tomorrow's crazy, you can take that in. What was, what was yours? Because I know you've had uh, you have several. had an interesting right. career, but a lot of ups, a sure. lot of downs. Man, I've had several glory moments. Uh, 
I'll give you a quick. So starting, I was just always different. So people didn't really understand me right. just in general. But then my art and my music, having so many different perspectives, my father being a pastor, gospel music was a big part of my life. Uh, my aunt is Rosie Gaines, who sung with Prince, Diamonds and Pearls, nice. you know what I mean? Having that perspective, having all these different influences and all these different inspirations, it was like, what type of music do I want to do? I want to do it all, uh -huh. you know what I mean? So I got with these producers who I really believed could help me get there with rock and all the things I wanted uh -huh. to do. I put one song out and it started to go. Uh -huh. And they tried to make me signed to their production team or then they wouldn't give me the songs. Okay. God messed me up. I was like, what? Uh -huh. So they told me I wouldn't make it without them. So mm -hmm. I walked away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. I don't need your songs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it on my own. Literally two weeks after that, L.A. Reid wow. bought me in the studio. I got wow. to record music in the studio. They gave me a studio. Wow. And I Lord, recorded Lord. my first project, <laughs> Coke Jack and Cadillacs, wow. which was yeah. just like... Me and that was my glory moment because from that, mm -hmm. different labels and people was hitting me. You know, I had already known Mad Artist Miguel. Mm -hmm. I've known already people, so it's like it was about me. Yeah, you know what I mean. So they hit me up and they was like, you know, we want you to come in. Blah, 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 blah. Went to a few different labels. Second glory moment is Mark Pitts hitting me and saying he wanted mm -hmm. to see me in person. What's up? And I was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? I had put out my song, Pledge Allegiance, and he loved it. It was uh -huh. gone. And uh, when I got in the office, he was like, you know, I just wanted to see if you is you, like you are you, yeah, how yeah, I yeah. see you. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, this is how I am in real life. <laughs> like, this is I dress every yeah, day. Yeah. This is my person. Okay. Yeah. I wear, like, you know what I mean? This yeah. is me. And he was like, nah, we got to do this. So that was my second glory moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know a lot of artists that get signed to a label and have opportunities, but they never really get the chance to put out their music. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they were excited about my shit. So right. it was like, yeah. the next glory moment was them actually, my, my single, which wasn't even supposed to be a single. It was supposed to be just a test, you know, just like a buzz, went. Mm -hmm. And it went number one. Yeah. And I'm like, what? After somebody told me that I wouldn't make it without right. them. Then it got nominated for a Grammy, so it was right. like a constant. It was like a it's one. just like right. oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh. You know what I mean? To where I'm at now, and I'm working on my next album, and it's all glory. You know what I mean? With yo, people it, I love. It, yo, it's it's crazy because it seems like most of your glory moments, and it, it's it, I've been finding that doing this had a lot to do with independence. You know, when you when you when you said, you know what. I'm walking away, oh, and I have the courage to do that. You, you, you got to the glory when you said, you know what? I'm gonna take a chance and drop out of school mm -hmm. and come out here and do this, and it worked out for you. Same with you. That's you, cool. you know, you kind of like, you yeah, know, you yeah, stepped yeah, out on your yeah. own in many different ways. Yeah, I got a whole lot to my story. Yeah, yeah. 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 right, right, right. I'm trying to keep right, it. Right, right, right. We yeah. all trying to minimize. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I done had but, several jobs all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? With songs on the radio, Man. still working. But, you know what I mean? Things. But I, but what I think is is great about this, you know, and, and this particular uh, segment is is knowledge, and you know, you guys all look great to the fans and all of these different things, and you will continue to make us all proud because you guys are all hustlers and real artists. But it's important for people to know how you got here and the journey, and you know, it's still gonna be ups, it's still gonna be downs, and they can follow you guys and really know that you guys are relatable, you know, on the process. But anyway. I really want to thank y'all for coming out. Ro James, Stacey Barnes, Dre Harris, my family. Listen, this is another episode of the Glory Podcast. We got more coming your way.